Welcome back to SharePoint Framework for Beginners. Today, we're looking at PMP SP. So PMP, Patterns and Practices, is a community-driven Microsoft effort, and we're going to use it within our SharePoint Framework web part. Now, why are we going to do that? Why are we using PMP over something like the HTTP client for accessing lists? Well, PMP gives us cleaner, simpler code. It's much more readable. We don't have to know what the exact string of an API call is, uh, as you'll see as we dive deeper into it. It's a very rich, fluent API. As you start to use the PMP SP, you'll see that IntelliSense in Visual Studio Code or Cursor or similar will pick it up, which makes it a lot easier as you're developing. Uh, it kind of handles the boilerplate code for you, so you don't need to worry about headers or, or doing things like building query strings up or passing JSON manually. It automatically deals with authentication, and it's great at doing things like uh, expanding, filtering, ordering. Uh, it's all a lot easier using PMP SP. You've got consistency across projects, so as you go on to a maybe outside the SharePoint framework world and into Azure and things like that, it uses a similar syntax. You get advanced features out the box like batching and caching, that's all built into it. And it's community driven. So it's well maintained and used throughout Microsoft 365. You probably wouldn't use it if you just had a simple call to make and you wanted to keep your the package size of your web part to a minimum. But I think you should use it because it's faster development, it's easier to read the code, especially for team projects, and it comes with all the powerful extras like caching and batching and things like that. As we go on in the next episodes, you'll see PMP property controls, PMP um, controls that we're going to use in our web part. So we might as well get into the whole PMP ecosystem. Let's dive straight in. OK, let's add PMP SP to our project. Now, there's a number of packages available. I'm just going to read through them here. PMP SP, that's the main SharePoint package. OK, and this contains all the methods for reading from lists, from folders, writing to lists, um, doing a search, taxonomy, all this kind of stuff. Then you've got PMP Graph for uh, interfacing with the Graph API. We're not going to use that today. We've got the logging one as well. Uh, we're not going to use that, but it does allow you to provide quite a good logging kind of subsystem if you want that. The other two that are necessary are PMP queryable. Now, this, this kind of handles all the pipelines, the kind of middleware, as it were, between PMP SP and, and the SharePoint framework. This is installed by default as part of uh, PMP SP. And the other one we've got is PMP core, which is used by everything basically shared across all packages. So the first thing we're going to do is install the latest version, but there is a very important point I want to show you here, and this is crucial to success. All right, so essentially, if you just do npm install PMP SP, it will probably install version one. And then you'll be looking at the tutorial and thinking, why isn't my code working? And all that kind of thing. We need to tell it to use four or above when we're using um, Node uh, 22 and the latest version of the SharePoint framework. OK, actually, before we do anything, I'm just going to check that I'm on the latest version of Node, which I am. If you're not, use FNM or NVM, whichever package manager you use to install that. OK, so let's um, let's try that again. So we're going to do npm install pnpsp, but notice version 4 and above, OK, so that we're not going to have any legacy stuff in there. I'm going to save that off. OK, so it says it's OK, but it does need those two dependencies. So I think just to be sure, um, I'm going to install those as well. OK, we're going to do npm install and I'm going to put in queryable for and above and core above. Again, I'm not sure at this point whether we need this, but better safe than sorry. OK, if we now look at our package.json, you'll see that's been updated. And it's now got uh, in here our latest packages in there. OK, 4.17 at the time of recording. Yours may be different. 
Okay, so we're going to make some modifications to our FAQ web part. So let's have a look in our code at faqwebpart.ts. And the first thing we want to do is we want to import the core SharePoint PMP SP components. Okay, so I'm going to do this up here and type that in there. And we're just getting an error there that we haven't used them yet. So we, we've got lowercase SPFI, uppercase SPF, and then X and SPFI. So what does each one of these do? Well, SPFI, lowercase, that's the factory class, a function to create a new instance of PMPJS. The SPF, lowercase X import, well, that's a binding function that will allow SPFX to be bound to the context of the web part that we're in at the moment. And SPFI is a TypeScript interface to make it nice and easy for us to use with TypeScript. So as a quick recap, SPFI, that creates the uh, PMPJS SharePoint instance. SPFX, that connects the instance to the context of the web part. An SPFI, well, that's the TypeScript interface to make it easy for us to code with. All right, very good. So now I'm going to extend it with the bits that are used. Now, I think it's been very clever in the packaging of these that you only have to import uh, the bits that you need to use when you're um, accessing lists. So for example, I'll show you what I mean. We're using webs because we need to talk to the context. We've got lists because we need to talk to lists and we've got items because we need to talk to list items. So three bits of these packages we're using. It means we don't have to import everything, but we only import what we need to use. So moving down the code, I want to say we're using SP and for TypeScript, we can say that use SPFI so that we know what functions it's using and stuff. And so IntelliSense works very well with it. And it's type safe as well, of course. The next thing I want to do is add to our on init function. And on init, I want to say that this, okay, so the SP that we defined up at the top there is a new instance here of SPFI, which of course is the um, PMP instance. And then um, we're using this dot context. So it's saying create this SP connected to the context of the web part we're in at the moment. So at the moment, we're passing in a list title. Okay, and we're going to use that, but you'll see in the next episode that we'll use some pretty funky controls to allow us to pick a list and then pass that through. Okay, the next thing I want to do is pass our SP, our PMP SP object through to our web part. So the way we do that is we need to look at the properties for the FAQ web part. I'm going to add an import in here, and I'm going to add a new item in here, which is going to be SP SPFI. Okay, now I'm going to leave the HTTP client in there for now, because I just because I want to show the difference between them as we go through that. Now, as we get an, an error here, because it's saying I'm not passing this in, so literally I just pass in SP, and this will be this.sp. So I'm passing in the instance of it. Fantastic. So that means we can pass this through to our FAQ web part, which is really good. So if I look at the properties here, I'm also going to add into their SP and it will pull it out of the properties for me. Give me a bit of a warning because I'm not using it yet. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment out this bit of code. This is the code where we uh, read it using the HTTP from the last episode. And I'm going to do things in a very um, PMP SP way of doing things, which is I'm going to do await. SP that we passed in there. I'm going to say web. I'm going to do lists. And you can see already, this is a really nice way of doing things. We don't have to guess at what the URL is or anything like that. It's giving us a real nice type safe way of doing it. I'm going to do get by title. Okay. And in there, I'm going to put the uh, title that we pass in, which is safe title from last episode in there. And then what do we want to do? We want to do items. So we're going to do select. And then what have we got? We've got ID. We just comma delimit these. We've got title and we've got body. 
and we also want to do the top i'm going to put 50 that's got the same amount as our other query just there and then we just need to close that off as a function so we've got that data the only difference is now that we don't want to return the data dot value because data is the actual value and so i'm just going to comment this uh, line out here i'm going to put this in here which is set items to the data so what it's doing now you notice that in one line it's essentially doing what was done in all these other lines here so the question remains does it work well let's have a look okay let's remove the errors that we've got here problems so we're not using that anymore so i'm going to just comment that out okay let's try and build it let's try and run it let's add in our web part Let's set a list title. And there we are, all working as it was before. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed integrating PMP into your project. Join us next time where we'll look at the PMP property controls and we can put a really nice list picker in our FAQ web part. Thanks for supporting the channel. If you haven't done already, please click subscribe. I'll see you next time.